Okay, we got PowerPoint to record, not as a crutch. So today I just want to spend a couple minutes clarifying an issue from the lecture, which was pretty confusing after I rewatched it. Uh, and the issue or the mechanism or the technique is a one-step versus two-step yeast recombination. And this in particular relates to this paper, which we were discussing, designer deletion strains derived from Saccharomyces cerevisiae S288C. So this is a paper where these researchers are actually building some of the main yeast strains that we use in the lab. And some of the things that they have to do are delete some of the oxytrophic marker genes. Okay, so essentially the premise of this paper is the researchers want to delete some genes. The gene in particular that they're deleting is lice 2. Okay, so let's talk about how you do this in a one step versus a two-step yeast recombination. The researchers in this paper use a two-step. Um, and the main difference between these is one step, one step is gonna produce scars in the DNA. And a two-step is gonna be scarless. Okay, that means like it's gonna remove, with a one-step deletion, you're gonna have to actually add something in to delete. It's counterintuitive. But the two-step is a process by which it's scarless. There's no scars left in the DNA to some extent. Okay, so let's let's draw out the mechanism of how they do this. It's a little too thick. Okay, so first let's draw one-step recombination. This is easy. Okay, this is the easiest thing. So what they do is they build a plasmid. Let's say, first let's draw out the gene they want to delete. Uh, and this is five prime. There's a left section. Here's the gene, lice two. And then there's a right section of the genome, okay? And these are their homology regions. These are their targets for homology. So homology region left, homology region right. So what they do is they design PCR primers. They clone this left part, left, right there. They design PCR primers. They clone this right part, okay? And on this plasmid, there's a URA3 cassette. So you can select for this plasmid in yeast by dropout media that lacks uracil okay so they build this plasmid and they want to delete this gene okay so all you need to do in a one-step reaction very very easy okay in a one-step reaction you use a restriction enzyme to cut this plasmid in half let's draw what that yields what that yields would be left Ura three, right, homology regions. Okay. So there, so this is where you cut the plasmid right here. It generates this, and then the recombination is extremely easy to understand. It's just a recombination of this piece, which matches that piece, and the right side, which matches that right side, and the products. It's going to yield two products. The first product, product one, is going to be the chromosome which now has left ura3 right okay the second product that's going to pop out of the genome is going to be left and it's going to be linear lice2 right okay and because this is linear and it doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have a plasmid replicon. It's gonna be well. Okay, I'll edit that out because it's linear. It's gonna be degraded over time. So this is gonna disappear. And what you're gonna be left with is this in the chromosome. And again, you can select for this recombination specifically by just growing these transformants on media lacking 
here a cell, which will select for this recombination. Okay, that's one step, recombination. That's extremely easy to understand. Two step is much harder. And it's the reason why I'm trying to redo this video, two step recombination. I wanna to try to draw it out as best I can and discuss it very simply. Okay. So the concept starts with the same process. So build a plasmid with two homology arms. Okay, so it's gonna be the same plasmid. There's gonna be a left, and this time let's actually like color code these. And let me get the pen the right size and a right. Okay. Same thing, Euro 3 cassette. And these left and right regions match left, lice 2, right. They match these regions in the genome. Okay, same process. Two, here's where a difference comes in. When they cut to linearize the plasmid, they cut in the middle of right. Okay, so let's draw a cut mark. They cut in the middle of right. Okay, this creates an R1 and an R2 region. Okay, so the left region is gonna serve as the homology arm for the second recombination, but the R1 and the R2 are gonna serve as the homology re uh, regions for the first recombination. So let's draw, once they've cut this, what does it look like? What does it yield? So I'm just gonna flip this. There's gonna be, I'll draw it over here. There's gonna be the R2, and if I'm using the color coding, it should look like this. Okay. There's gonna be the Euro 3 cassette and there's going to be left and the R1. Okay, so it's cut. Now this was the hardest part for me to understand is how does this recombination happen in a way where if you look in the figure, when you look at the figure, what they show you is they show you this picture right here. And it took me a long time to try to figure out how they generate this product. Like what, what pieces mixes mix with what to generate that. And I think I've got an understanding now. So when they cut this, the restriction enzyme is gonna create sticky ends, okay? And then the recombination looks like this. I'll draw them with different colors. So one of the holiday junction invasions is going to be this, okay? And let's get a different color. Second holiday junction invasion is going to be that, okay? So essentially what's happening is this R1 region is connecting to this R2 region, okay? And this R2 region is connecting to this R1 region. It's really confusing, okay? But the product generated is now going to look like this. Chromosome, left, lice2, R1, okay? And that's this piece connected to R2, which is this piece, okay? Then if you follow the plasmid around. So now this is a complete right section. It's got both R1 and R2. It's gonna have the Euro 3 
going along the plasma this way. Okay, keep going. And then on the right side, what you're going to see is the left marker that was on the plasmid. You're going to see the R1 marker, which is this. And that's going to be fused following the green to the R2 on the plasmid. And that's going to continue on into the chromosome. So you end up with this. Okay, so I've drawn out specifically the mechanism of how you get this. And that is this piece right here. And I tried to sort of draw this out, but I didn't do it well with these dotted lines. And it's, it's a confusing process to understand that. So that's the step one recombination. But this is a two-step recombination. So then what happens is this DNA forms a structure that looks like this. Okay, so now imagine that fold. That fold is then gonna bring, I'll color them green, this left region and this left region together on the plasmid. And then there's gonna be a second recombination. This one's easy to understand. The second recombination, so two recombination, is going to yield two products, one that looks like this, chromosome left, this left, right, which is actually this right here. So it's R1, R2, chromosome, okay? And then the thing that pops out is going to be everything in between okay so it's going to be the lice r1 r2 euro 3 and the left this is going to pop out just like the last one this is linear so it's going to be degraded over time so you're going to lose this Okay, and what you're going to be left with this is this and you can actually select for this. So the way that the selection works, this is the third step. It's called type it out. It's called counter selection, which is selecting for the loss of something. There's a drug in yeast we use called FOA. Here's actually the drug on Wikipedia, 5-fluorooic acid. We just call it FOA. And what it is, is it's used in yeast genetics to select for the absence of the Euro 3 gene. So it actually causes toxicity if they have Euro 3 and kills the cells if they have Euro 3. So adding FOA to our media causes the yeast to select for that recombination, the loss, the loss of the Euro 3 cassette, which brings with it a loss of the lice 2 gene. That is how a two-step recombination in yeast works.